Good morning, Transformers, and praise the name of the living God. I trust that we have been kept by the Lord, even as we look deeper into this season of threshing the mountains. And we need to get to a place where we understand that the Lord has given us the ability, the resources, the strength, and the faith to be able to understand these um, mountains and to be able to understand how we are going to scale the heights and get them uh, even as we get into the scripture. So allow me to pray as we start. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. Even as we invite you in this week just to minister to us by your spirit, just to lead us and guide us and show us through scripture how we can be able to be mountain treasures even as you've called us in our theme this year. Lord, we bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. So allow me to start from the book of Isaiah chapter number 40 uh, from verse number I'm reading from the New Living Translation from verse number 28. And the Bible says, Have you heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fail in exhaustion. But those who wait upon the Lord will find new strength. They will soar up, they will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. The Lord is speaking to us through the book of Isaiah, through the prophet Isaiah, concerning the possibilities of issues coming and overwhelming us into a state where we may lose strength, we may lose hope. We may feel like we are fainting. We may feel like we have run the race uh, for a long time until we have no strength left. The beauty about the theme that we have in this year is that I, the Lord, will help you. So he starts from the end of the book of Isaiah chapter number 40 before we get to our theme uh, chapter, verse number 41 of Isaiah. And he says there's a possibility of the young people, the young, the young people who may look like they are very strong, the young people who look like they are vibrant, there's a possibility of them falling into this trap of losing uh, strength and even fainting or even falling or even running and not getting to the end of their race. But the Bible says that, but they that wait upon the Lord. So what I want us to discuss this morning is the aspect on waiting upon the Lord the kind of waiting upon the Lord for us to be able to receive this strength so that we will not be counted among those who lose faith or those who lose hope. So he said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It means that the foundation of the strength that we're going to get for the sake of taking up the mountains is founded in the place of waiting. Now waiting is not a passive way of just sitting down and letting things, things flow. It means that we are at rest in our hearts concerning the promises that God gave unto us. We are at peace in the assurance of he who started a good work in us and who is faithful to complete it. We are at rest concerning the promises and the purposes of God concerning our lives. It means that when I'm sensitive to the leading of the Spirit of God, I'm not rushing with the calendars of my, of my culture. I'm not running with the calendar of my bloodline. I am waiting on God that I am surrendering my will to his will and allowing him to take the lead such that my calendar will align with his calendar. It has to be his will, it has to be his purpose, it has to be his agenda, even in the season of waiting. So he says, in the place of waiting, we renew our strength. The deep that we have concerning threshing mountains is because of the foundation of the help that we receive from God. So in the place of waiting is the ability that is built within us. It is the fortification of the inner man concerning be, being able to rise up again. That means in the season of waiting, it is the equipping of a saint concerning the things that he or she needs for the sake of where she, he or she has to go. It means that in this place, it is the equipping of the listening of what the Lord has as instructions for you for the sake of the mountains that you have to take. It is the place of understanding by the revelation of the word of God what is expected of you or what mountains you ought to thresh at a given time. It is a place of understanding what kind of a mountain am I supposed to face? What am I supposed to do with this mountain that is ahead of me? Is this mountain meant to bring me down. No, the mountain is meant to be able to be crushed under my feet, but only when I have the understanding. So it is this place of waiting, waiting through the instructions of the word of God, waiting in the place of prayer, waiting in the place of um, studying the word of God, meditating upon the word of God. Then he says that these people who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It means that there's a revelation of a newness 
of that which the Lord wants to package in us in this season that is going to help us to be able to scale the heights and the mountains that are ahead of us. Now that the obstacles that come in the names of mountains will bow and submit under our authority when we have sat in the presence of God to the place of understanding of who we are in Him and what is expected of us. So he said, when we renew our strength, it means there's a newness, there's a purging in our spirits, there's a, a, a force that is, in, uh, that is put in our spirits that is going to help us to stay afloat. It means that there's a pumping through the word of God that causes our eyes to be open to be able to see what is at stake and what is expected of us. So he said they are going to renew their strength, they are going to mount up with wings like eagles. It means that this place of waiting is not the place of death. The place of waiting is the place of getting uh, the ability to be in motion again for the next phase in life. So as we renew our strength, we start mounting up. So mounting up is the place of we need to understand that when egos are charged and they are ready for movement, they go higher, they go up upon the mountains, they know they are wired to be able to navigate life in the cold places and even in the high places where the mountains are. Now we need to understand that place of mountains is a place where it is not for everybody. When we talk about mounting up and when we talk about going and scaling the heights of the mountains, it means that it's going to take a lot of energy. It's going to take a lot of commitment. It's going to take a lot of um, uh, getting the skills of knowing how am I going to leave the comfort zone so that I start going up. Because mountains are elevated. They are, they are portions of earth that are lifted on high. So it means that I have to purpose in my heart to leave my comfort zone to leave the plateau and to start scaling the height day by day until I get to the peak. Now we also need to understand that once we start scaling the heights of these mountains or we start navigating around these mountains as we're going to see in this week, we need the energy that is up above our own energy. That means that we need to get the abilities that are divine, the help that is divine for us to be able to get the energy to be able to go up so that we may be able to get to the top of the mountains. Until we get to the top of the mountains, then we can be able to say that the mountains are below us, that we have been able to bring them to, to the place where we are on top or we are reigning. So we, we also need to look at the book of Micah, chapter number four, and then we get another point as we continue. Micah, chapter number four, verse number, verse number 12. And the Bible says, but they, they know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither understand his counsel, for he has, he shall gather them as the sheaves into the flock. For they know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither understand his, his counsel, for he shall gather them as sheaves unto the flock. Verse number 13, Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make you born, I will make you, you, born iron and I will make your hooves brass and you shall beat into pieces many people and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. The Bible is talking about people who do not have the understanding because for us to be able to get to the place of waiting upon the Lord, it is that we are going to interact with the wisdom of God. We are going to interact with the understanding of God. So Micah is talking about a people who do not have the understanding nor the wisdom of what is expected of them. So in the place of waiting, you will be able to be uh, you will be able to get into the root cause of these mountains and understand what the Lord has in store for us so that you will not just wake up in the morning and you start saying, I'm going to take up the mountains, I'm going to, uh, to thresh the mountains. The Lord will have to give you the equipping through the wisdom and understanding that comes by the word of God, revealed by the Holy Spirit of God concerning what is expected of you. So I pray that we will not be counted among those people who have no understanding. You can wake up in the morning with a fire and you want to take up the mountain, you want to climb, you feel like you're ready. But have you consulted the Spirit of God? So the Bible says these are people who have no understanding at all. But then in verse number 13, he said, Arise, O daughter of Zion. It means that after the place of sitting, the Lord is going to equip you with the abilities that are divine for you to be able to rise up and take the mountains. It means that you will not depend on your strength. You will not be, depend on your expertise. You will not depend on your skill. You can only depend on the Holy Spirit of God. He who was there before the mountains began. He who was there before the obstacles began. It means that he has the agenda and he has the ability and the willingness to be able to give you the keys that you may be able to know what is expected of, of you. The book of Zechariah chapter number 4 verse number 6. 
And the Bible says, for it is not by might or by power, but by the Holy Spirit of God. Any help that you're going to get in this season has to be founded in the Word of God and revealed by the Spirit of God. Any word that we need has to be uh, carried by the breath of the Spirit of God. Any strategy that we are going to receive in this season has to be the strategy of the Spirit of God. That the pursuits that we have in God have to be the pursuits that are um, um, connected to the Spirit of God. It's not my pursuit. It's not that I'm taking the mountains for me to feel that I have achieved as a person. It means that I want to glorify God, that those obstacles in mountains have to be brought down. But then I will understand I do not have the ability as a person to be able to do this. But by the help of the Holy Spirit of God, I am able to get there in the mighty name of Jesus. So we are looking at, it is not by might. Let, let us just read that portion of scripture in the book of Zechariah. And then we are going to see and the details of the mountain that was there at, the, at that time. So the book of Zechariah chapter number 4 from verse number 6. Again I'm reading from the uh, New Living Translation. Then he said unto me, this is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel. It is not by force nor by strength, but by my spirit says the Lord of, uh, of heaven's armies. He's saying, you know, this scripture is talking about it is not by force. It is not uh, by the power of the 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 abilities that are physical, you know, when you talk about a force, it is the exertion of a, of a certain energy, whether negative or positive, to be able to move an object from one place to another. But he's saying it is not the exertion of force, it is the divine enablement of the Spirit of God. The force that we need is not physical, because physical energy will fail at some time. But he's saying it is the energy that I give unto you, by you connecting to the source of the power, who is the Spirit of God, that is going to help you to be able to rise to the place where you can be able to bring this, this mountain down. And then he said, it's not by force or by strength. Strength may fail. That is why we read from the book of Isaiah chapter number 40. Even the young people who are full of strength, they have a possibility or there's a time in their lives where they feel like they're fading. But the Lord is saying beyond the failure of the strength of a young man who is expected to be of strength, I, the Lord, will help you in the place of waiting. So he says, it is by my spirit, says the Lord of heaven's armies. It is the Lord who is giving you the assurance. It is by my spirit. It is not any other spirit. It is not any other power. It is by my spirit. So when the Lord gives you the token of his spirit as a helper in your space, it means that he has given you the ability that cannot be defeated by any mountain in this earth, in the mighty name of Jesus. And then he says, nothing, not even a mighty mountain, will stand in Zerubbabel's way. It will become a level plain before him. And when Zerubbabel sets the final stone on the temple in place, the people will shout, may God bless it, may God bless it. So we need to understand he's saying, even the mighty mountains will not be able to stand before Zerubbabel. This is the servant of God. And in this place we are saying, we are the ones who are standing in this place. And maybe you could be there and you are asking, there's a great mountain ahead of me. Let the scripture minister to you as it was in the days of Zerubbabel. The Lord is saying it is the same might and the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit of God that confirmed in the heart of Zerubbabel. There is no great mountain that has the authority and the power to stand before you. Now we also need to understand that when we look at mountains, we are looking at obstacles that are lifted very high. That you're looking at things that are so much ahead of us that we don't know how to navigate. Mountains can be threatening. Mountains can be things that have been lifted in our spirits or in our physical um, environment that you look at them and you cannot see beyond because it is a blockade between you and your destiny, between you and the other side, between you and getting to your destiny. But he's saying even if it is a great mountain, so there are levels in mountains, there are hills, there are small mountains, but there are others that are lifted up on high. So he said even that great mountain has no authority to stand before Zerubbabel because the Lord is giving us the capacities and the strategies to be able to level the mountains. Now even as we look through the week, we are going to look at how do we now by the help of the Holy Spirit as we partner with him, how are we able now to bring down these mountains? Now let us go back to our theme scripture in the book of Isaiah chapter number 41 and we see what the Lord is saying concerning these mountains. Isaiah chapter number 41 from verse number 1. And the Bible says, Listen in silence before me, you lands, beyond the sea. Bring your strongest arguments. Come now and speak. The court is ready for your case. The Lord is saying, after you have waited on him, after you have waited in him, after you have been quiet listening to him, 
he says, now, let me show you the help that, the help that I'm going to give unto you. He goes ahead and, and he's saying, I am silencing the coastlands ahead of you. Listen in silence before me. The only voice that is allowed to speak in this place after you have been silent in the, in the presence of God is the voice of God. So he commands the mountains and say, be silent before me, O coastlands. Be silent before me, you lands that are beyond the sea. That means he's telling us there's a place that is beyond where we are that has to hear the voice of God, that has to be silenced by the abilities of the capacities that are in God. So he says, be silent. And then he says, you lands that are beyond the sea, bring your strongest arguments. I dare you as God. What is it that you have that you can bring before me? What argument that is so strong that you can bring before me? And then he says, come now and speak. The court is ready. That if you have a strong argument, O oh ye mountain, if you are able to come and dare me, O oh ye uh, obstacle, and you stubborn issue, now I've given you access. Come and bring it to the court. Now we need to understand when God is daring these mountains, He's telling us, when you have partnered with me, I am able to speak on your behalf because the mountains will hear the voice of God. The mountains may not hear your voice because it may be too small. But when the Lord thunders on our behalf, the mountains start melting before you. So he says, when you bring that strong argument, the court is ready for you. I want to encourage us as we come to the close of this day, the Lord is saying, he is daring those mountains. And he's saying, you coastlands and you beyond the sea, those agendas that have tried to bring you down. He's saying, bring them. I am ready. Come and, come and speak. Let us bring this argument. And then I'm going to win the case. Now that's why he continues to say, I'm going to help you. Because he's saying that those arguments that maybe they have a legal hold, they have a legal right. Maybe those personal issues or those family issues or those cultural issues or national issues or world issues. The thing that they want to threaten me, I thunder and I silence them. And I will command them and call them to a place of, of, of sitting and speaking only when I have allowed them to come. So it means that the Lord is calling us to a place of we have to have an assurance in this work that we have with him. That we are not alone in this journey. That the Lord has already gone ahead of us. That the Lord has spoken ahead. All we need to do is to understand what he's saying. And then we need not to be afraid about the mountains that are ahead of us. Because when the Spirit of God who is sent as a helper from God is within us, it means that we have access to the graces that we need for the sake of the mountains to come down. So allow me to stop there and I want to encourage you that the Lord has our agenda in his heart. The Lord has our agenda in his hands. He is the mighty man of war. He has never lost a battle. Regardless of how big the mountain may be, the Lord is able to speak one word and that mountain will come down. Regardless of how, how humongous the mountain may be, one word from the Lord is able to bring down that. So I will end by saying this, let us purpose to go by the script of the Holy Spirit. In the place of waiting in God, the Spirit of God is able to speak in clarity of that which you need to understand and to know, of that which you need to package yourself into for the sake of the mountains. So the script of the Holy Spirit of God is discovered in the Word of God. This Word is where the Spirit of God is going to breathe the breath and be able to help you to get to the place where you ought to be at a given time. Allow me to stop there. Let me pray over you that, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you're going to help us by the help of the Holy Spirit of God. That the mountains ahead of us, even as it was in the days of, uh, of Zerubbabel, however great and however huge, at the mention of your word, at the thunder of your voice, these mountains will come down. We also pray that we are going to align with the Spirit of God concerning which way we need to take for the sake of where we ought to go. So I pray that even as your people leave the house this Monday, or they are driving, or they are in their offices, or they are flying, oh God, I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, they are going to agree with the partnership of the Holy Spirit of God. They are going to embrace the script of the Spirit of God. And at the end of it all, we can agree with Hosea and say, indeed, it is not by might, it is not by power, but by the Spirit of God. God bless you as you start on this day. May you walk in the light of the understanding of the word of God. May you receive the help of the spirit of God. And may you go knowing those mountains have no authority over you because you have the partnership of the spirit of God through the word of God in wisdom and in understanding. God bless you. Let us meet tomorrow as we continue on another aspect of threshing the mountains because this is the word for the season. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.